to this episode of Tech Talks with Tetra at IT. I am with Lucy Coles, and I should say I have the privilege of being with Lucy Coles, who is the account um, manager, the partner account manager at Salesforce for Africa. And today we'll be discussing just that, investing in South Africa through Salesforce. So Lucy, a lot of us here at Tetra know you and many of us are big fans of yours, but for our listeners out there who might not be familiar with you, Please, could you tell us who you are? Maybe you can tell us a bit of about the work that you do and your journey. Perfect. Thank you very much, Lysanda. I'm privileged. After all of the hints that I've dropped, you guys have finally got me on this TED Talk, mm-hmm. so I'm thrilled. Um, so, hi, I'm Lucy Coles. I'm a partner account manager um, for Salesforce, looking after the African ecosystem. I've been with Salesforce for about six years, always in kind of alliances and channels and always looking after Africa and the emerging region in some way, shape or form. Um, And I'm based out of what is usual usually a miserable and rainy London, but it's actually quite sunny today, which is nice. Um, And I'm originally from Zimbabwe, which my accent doesn't give me away, but I feel an affiliation with Africa. So I love that I work in this market. Yay, so we share that. I have um, roots in Zimbabwe as well. So (laughs) (laughs) So for those who have heard a little bit about Salesforce, might not be completely familiar with it, might know it just as a CRM. How could people in the African market educate themselves about Salesforce? Okay, so the first thing is there's lots of different ways, but I wanted to call out two specifically today. So we have a new course launching on the 15th of July course called Salesforce Fundamentals. Now, this is a free of charge 10 week program, and essentially it's an introduction to Salesforce. So it talks about who we are as a company. It talks about the business challenges that we solve, and it also talks about how as individuals you can innovate and grow with us. So I would say if you're at all interested, please check that out. Um, The other thing that it would be remiss to have a session about Salesforce without talking about would be Trailhead. So this is our online learning platform where you can do self-paced study on a myriad of different topics. So say you are a salesperson, pre-sales, marketing, or even a techie. Um, and whether you know a lot about Salesforce or kind of just at the start of your journey, there's definitely a path on there for you. So those would be my two things, Salesforce Fundamentals and Salesforce Trailhead. Awesome. And we do have trailblazers at Tetrad. So we are quite familiar with Trailhead. I myself have used it. And I love the fact that it's practical. Uh, you really get into whatever material it is that you choose. And again, they're the choice. I know there's, as you said, a myriad of options in terms of what you can get into at Salesforce. So I like the fact that Trails, Trailhead kind of directs you and helps you mm-hmm. to follow a particular path at a time. Hmm. Yeah. Very, very excited as well about what you mentioned uh, coming out on the 15th. That really excites me because especially at the time that we're living in, um, so many people are at home and looking for opportunities to sort of expand and upskill. So that's very, very exciting on the part of Salesforce. I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. So we've definitely heard people say that Africa is the future, emerging market, and it's apparent that there is still a lot of untapped potential in Africa as well as South Africa. So would you say that you've learned something interesting in the way that Salesforce um, is being used in a developing market such as Africa? Yeah, so I think you're absolutely spot on. Africa has so much untapped potential. And I think from a purely Salesforce perspective, we are at the stage where we actually have more projects than we have enabled resources in the country to deliver. And this challenge is only going to compound as we grow. And what this means is that for school leavers or people looking to make a career change or people just looking for an opportunity, 
By going down a Salesforce enablement route, you are guaranteed to have skills that are in high demand. Um, and I imagine that Salesforce is not the only vendor creating this opportunity in the market. So I think that's one thing that's really exciting for Africa. And I think the other side of it is this aspect and this kind of potential that we're moving now to a hybrid or a virtual workplace more and more. And I think people are looking for educated resources that are not specifically in country. And how this works for Africa is that they can advertise now to Europe and um, what they can advertise is a cost effective skills base that's available on a really attractive time zone. Um, and, and that essentially means that Africa has the potential to be the next India as companies look at nearshore and offshore um, skills to resource their projects. I must say, I really appreciate what you've just said about our time zone. Um, I also work with support in various different time zones. And so I really appreciate the fact that, for example, you may have rolling teams across the globe that allow you never to phone and not find anybody on support. So that would be a very exciting opportunity in terms of creating that kind of pool that Salesforce can pull from to make sure that as you say, it's just another time zone on the map that, that can yeah. provide an ex the excellent service that Salesforce is known for providing. So that's yeah. awesome. And I think it's especially, um, you know, you can offer services to kind of America um, and Australia and all of that, but I definitely think, you know, when you're looking at Europe, and I, I said I'm based in London and South Africa is only an hour ahead, mm. right? So that's great. If you need engineers who are working in a UK time zone, Africa is really attractive, you know what I mean, in South Africa specifically. Um, so I, I think that's really an area that we haven't capitalized on that, that I think we could. Wonderful, wonderful. And looking forward to, to seeing that expansion. I'm sure that we will see that growth, especially as you've mentioned now that there are training opportunities that people are aware of where it can at least be a, a jump start or a starting point in terms of yeah, growing, finding out what Salesforce is about. Mm -hmm. and upskilling themselves. Um, Salesforce does provide uh, numerous offerings. Which of the Salesforce services are you most excited about and why would that be? Lysander, that's like asking me to choose my favorite child. Um, <laughs> but I think it's kind of an easy one for me. So I joined Salesforce originally to help migrate the exact target partners into the program after the acquisition. Um, and exact target is now what we know of as marketing cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and I find the innovations we're making in that space incredibly interesting. So what we can offer now in terms of innovative digital advertising and things like interaction studio with you know AI powered insights um, that provide really personalized experiences um, and then I think all of the way through to kind of datarama where it wraps it up in a nice pretty report that you can you know measure in real time and see how impactful your your marketing has actually been and I think as a consumer that's something that really resonates with me because when you talk about kind of like cross channel and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, I can see that happening. So I think I'd have to say, yeah, the, the marketing cloud and um, the innovation that we're doing there, I would say is kind of my favorite or, or what I see as being the most exciting. Awesome. I remember one of the conferences that I attended, one of the Salesforce conferences, just being so excited by some of the clips that were shown of where you could potentially go with marketing cloud and with personalized marketing. Um, I remember, for example, and yes, it's it's future, you know, and it's not necessarily yeah. something that's in the pipeline, but just the possibilities of my, me driving my, I'm going to make a pretend that I drive a BMW, me driving my BMW, arriving at a traffic light or a robot, um, having a sign post there that then changes to show the very next BMW, for example, in market. So just yes. small things like that, that would really just appeal to me as the mm -hmm. consumer, or you know, even as I approach a Starbucks or a McDonald's and already I get a notification, oh, you can get a voucher. And these are some of the things that we were already seeing. So yeah. it's very And exciting. I think that the analogy that you use there is totally spot on. And I think, um, I'm at the stage now where I'm looking to buy a new car and I'm very excited we're going to go kind of an electric route and we're looking at the Jaguar 
Um, and one of the things that we were looking at is just kind of the app that they have about finding electric like filling stations. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just thinking about the opportunities for kind of marketing on top of that, right? Like you've got this app that tells you where your next like charging station is and the opportunity for people to come in and be like, well, we know you're charging for 40 minutes. So come and grab a Starbucks or something like that. So it's also the one thing when my mom tries to get me to explain what I do, I always just send her the marketing videos because I think it makes sense to people. And, and like you said, it's just exciting, right? Exactly, exactly. And we can apply it. We know where we want to be spoken to as a consumer and according to our personal preferences. So yeah. very, very cool. Nice choice there. Good job. <laughs> So last year um, and the year, you know, leading up to this year as well have been interesting, different, whatever word you want to use to describe them. With that in mind, what do you see in the future of Salesforce in Africa and globally? What can we look forward to? Because we really need things to be excited about. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, it's true. Like, it has been such a difficult year for everybody. And it seems like this difficulty is really prolonging for Africa. You guys are obviously, South Africa has gone into another lockdown. And I think it's going to be difficult for companies to weather. I think budgets are going to be tight. Resources are going to be um, limited. Um, and I think companies need to be really clever and strategic about the investments that they make. They need to choose technology that can be up and running quickly um, and can deliver a strong return on investment. Um, and I'm not going to be crass. I know you're looking for me to say it, but I, I don't think there's an opportunity out of COVID. Um, but what I do think is that companies who are agile and clever, I think there's a real opportunity that they can not just survive, but they can really thrive. And I think one of the interesting things is seeing industries and kind of innovation emerge that it's really kind of challenging the status quo. Um, and this isn't necessarily new, right? So before COVID, we had Airbnb, we had Netflix, we had Spotify, we had all of those things, but it's interesting to see what's coming next. Um, and here's my rosy, but the, the, the part to kind of get you excited. I think that new generations are growing up during lockdown, right? They're growing up with social distancing um, and mask wearing and checking in and, um, you know, all of these kind of things that we didn't have. And I think they grow, they're going to grow up thinking about the world differently and solve problems and see opportunities where we didn't before. And I think that's the part that I'm looking forward to, right? It's just kind of seeing the benefit of this different way of, of, of living. Absolutely. And I appreciate the fact that you decided not to go, like you say, a crass route, just from the point of view that we're all struggling. And so the idea that we're being targeted in our struggle wouldn't be, you know, the most positive idea. So I appreciate the fact that you've mentioned that we're continuing down a path that we had started down already. And, yeah. um, you know, to that point, my friend was telling me, for example, that her baby girl knows how to use steam inhalation to, when she gets back home to make sure that, you know, she hasn't yeah. caught anything while she's out. She doesn't pull on her mask at all. So those small things, I think, are things that we don't realize are being ingrained now. And it will be fascinating to see how the different things that we're seeing play out now really do um, come to fruition in the future. Yeah. And it's interesting what you say about your friend's little girl. So I've got two small boys and mm -hmm. the things that they are just second nature to them now, like if we go out and we're going to, we're walking somewhere and we walk into a shop, they'll be the ones who say, mom, your mask and like mm -hmm. remind me to put it on. And even like a check-in, like the app to kind of like check in where you are, they know how to like get the phone out and do the check-in and everything now. And I mean, they're three and a half, right? Like if they don't solve the world's problems, I don't know who is going <laughs> exactly. to. Exactly. No, absolutely incredible. And as you say, the fact that they're already interacting on digital platforms so early just shows that really what, what will they be able to create in the future? Looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> exactly right. Um, future Salesforce trailblazers, I think. There we go. <laughs> Already. <laughs> and I hope they'll make some courses for us as well. <laughs> Fantastic. No, it's been such a pleasure to chat to you, Lucy, and also to just see uh, the positives. I know that uh, when talking about Africa or the African market, often we speak about the challenges that we face in terms of infrastructure and other things. And I'm glad that we've been able to keep these this conversation positive and know that there are things to look forward to.
Thank you so much, Lysander. I've really enjoyed it as well. Great. And we will definitely interact in the future. Thanks. 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 Thanks.